Good evening and welcome. My name is Ginger Fay, and I am delighted to bring you here to the second installment of Appleruth's College Week. I'm one of the directors here at Appleruth, which is a tutoring and test prep company that helps students achieve their personal and academic goals. I've worked in college admissions and college counseling for over 25 years, including five years as an admissions officer at Duke University, which is my alma mater twice over. I've been a reader for Emory Admissions, as well as the Coca-Cola Scholars Program and the Jack Kent Cook Foundation Scholarships. The last time I counted, I had read more than 50,000 college essays. So this is one of my favorite things to hear and talk about. And for tonight's conversation, what parents can do to help with college essays, I am joined by a wonderful colleague who is a fantastic expert in this field. Kim Lifton is president and co-founder of WOW Writing Workshop, which teaches students and educational professionals a simple step-by-step -step process for writing effective college essays that help students tell their stories in an outstanding way. Kim is a former newspaper reporter and corporate communications manager and holds a BA in journalism from Michigan State University. I'm thrilled that you could join us tonight, Kim, and I'm looking forward to all of the good advice that you'll have for our those who are viewing us tonight. If you are finding yourself sort of struggling for a pen or trying to make dinner while you're watching, um, don't worry, we will send you um, Kim's slides from this presentation as well as a recording of this presentation and all of the events uh, that we've held during college week um, on Friday. Um, so it'll all come in one beautiful package. Uh, if you have specific questions for Kim, questions about the college essay and how it fits into this whole process, please feel free to pop those in the Q&A box as they occur to you. And we will try to cover as many of those as we can squeeze into the next hour. But we promise to try and only hold try and keep you for an hour um, because we know everyone is busy these days. Um, so Kim, thank you so much for being here. And um, I look forward to all the good advice that you have to share with us tonight. Thank you for having me. This is uh, this I've done uh, webinars with Apple Ruth for many, many years, but this is my second one with Ginger here at my side and 50,000 essays. I don't even think I've read that many. So Yay, Ginger, let's everybody give her some applause. What you're seeing on this screen is a book that we've written called How to Write an Effective College Application Essay, the Inside Scoop for Students. Uh, we have a book for mom and dad too, but this is the book that we're gonna be giving away tonight. And we'll give you all that information later in the program. So let's move on. Today's session, we're gonna talk about how parents can help, which is why I think most of you are here. Wow, it's top five questions that we get from parents just like you. I'm gonna tell you how you can get some resources and Ginger and I together will answer your questions. We do have some secrets at WOW. Um, a lot of times people expect someone to give you some magic formula that's gonna help you write your college essay that's going to help you help your children write these outstanding killer essays that no one's ever seen and the truth is that doesn't exist and that's not what colleges want what colleges want from your children and ginger can help me out with this one they want a story about your child that answers a prompt and the common app has six or seven prompts on it they get to pick the one that speaks to them and they want them to show insight, reflection, something that shares something meaningful about your child that they wouldn't otherwise know. They want your every good essay, every and scrap the word good, every effective college essay answers these two questions. What happened and why does it matter? And the real importance comes in the why. So our secret is the way to help the children do this, it's really a process, and I know that's not sexy, but it helps. Process to have a plan to get it done and a schedule. Next. So this, to succeed, you're going to have a process, which is, I've already said, a plan that your child can implement do something you can help them do and in a schedule the real real secret because we're talking about secrets is scheduling it not not like just saying i'm going to write this essay or honey go write your essay this weekend we give baby steps 
bite-sized chunks of instructions over a four-week period. In just a minute, I'm going to show you a sample schedule so you can see what I'm talking about. I think the schedule is next. So there's a schedule, and you should be able to see that it takes place over a month. If you look really closely, you can see how much time is spent on each step. All your child needs to succeed on a college essay is instructions. No matter what you think about the high school your child goes to, or the writing teacher, or the English teacher, or the science teacher, trust me, they are ready for this because the college essay is a thinking task. It's so what's going on up here, more, even more than it is a writing task. What do you think about that, Ginger? Yeah? See? <laughs> Anyway, so we have a schedule. We have a, and if you look at it closely, you can see that our students spend about two and a half weeks actually going through the writing process, the idea generating process, brainstorming, revisions. They spend two and a half weeks from beginning to end. And then the supplements are a little faster. Your student would probably spend your child about 14 to 20 hours on the very first essay. Never are they going to spend eight hours a day anytime doing it. It's broken up over two and a half weeks. Okay, next. So how you can help, that's what you all are here today. Well, first of all, you can get the book, the free book, and we'll give you the link. And there's lots of tips in there for brainstorming. Um, in the student book, we uh, talk about how students can help their parents help them. Parent book, how parents can help them. It's really the same message, just a little bit of a different audience. And if anybody wants a copy of the parent book and you shoot me an email at kim at wildwritingworkshop.com, I am happy to give you a link for that book as well. So the way, the best way for you to help your child is to teach them to reflect. And that's not a one-time conversation. So if you have a junior now, I don't know if you sit at the dinner table and talk to your children about life, but whenever there's an opportunity, talk to your child. If you're busy telling them to do their chores, unload the dishwasher, take the trash out, if you stop for a minute and tell your child something you like about them, something that you see, your, your daughter has been helping the neighbor whose husband died take the trash out every week. You can point out to your child how kind that is. Ask your child what she thinks about it and get her to just talk about it. And it's a continuous conversation. So you can help your child understand what makes them tick because you know them so, so well. The problem is you don't know what they're thinking about up here, but you do know if they're resourceful, you know if they're kind or compassionate. And the key is not telling them which trait to focus on in the college essay or essays, but to help guide them, help them understand that they all have these remarkable traits and that college is want to know that trait that your child likes about themselves the best. You can ask them what the top, what they think their friends think about them. You can, you can just keep talking about what you like about them. And I have never in my whole life met a teenager who didn't like it when the parents said something good to them. So there you go. One thing <clears throat> that I have found is it's very hard for parents to not help their children come up with ideas. And that's when you can overstep. So you mean well, I know it. Nobody's faulting you for this. Look, I wanted to tell my child what to write to, but I had to not do it. It's so hard. But colleges don't care what I think, and they don't care what you think. They only want to know how your child thinks. So please, please, please don't ever tell them what to write. Tell them what traits you like about them. Ask them to ask their friends what they like. Have them think about it. I don't care. They can keep journals. It doesn't really matter. But never tell them what to write. Okay, got that? We're going to come back to that later. Be a cheerleader, but not a coach. I'm an essay coach, but I don't even tell them what to write. We give students opportunities to explore, to think about their traits, to think about what stories match the traits. 
we cheer them on. We're positive. You should be positive, positive, positive. Not tell them, this essay sucks. <laughs> this isn't your best work, honey. Maybe this phrase will work better. Just be positive. Every single review I send to a student and our coaches send to a student, it starts with doing a great job. This is very good, positive. Another thing you can do is encourage your children to trust themselves, to build confidence. And actually, if you don't mind, I wanted to read a little something from our book that I thought would answer some of those questions that I get in my classes. I've been getting a lot of questions. I do a monthly free class, and I've been getting a lot of questions that lead me to believe that during COVID, we've had a little bit of a trust issue, and that students who haven't had the opportunity to have all the same activities as their siblings and kids four years ago, they're lacking a bit in confidence. So I wanted to read you this from my book. And I think this will answer some questions or maybe encourage you to have some more. So it says, before we start working with our students, we tell them this is your journey, so own the process. When you're done, you'll be more confident, empowered writer, ready for college and your future. Trust yourself. Your child should trust their own word, style, and voice. Every year, we work with students who tell us they can't write, but we know better because with instructions, anyone can learn how to write. We train educational consultants and high school counselors. We coach professionals and adults who want to improve their writing. And in all of our years working with students, we've never had a student who couldn't follow our instructions and complete an essay that answers a prompt effectively. So several years ago, we had a student, his name was David, and he was one of those students who lacked the confidence to write his essay. Applying to college was stressful, writing essays paralyzed him, and he came to us convinced he couldn't write. Yeah, I had to call him on that one. David was my student. <laughs> he had great grades in math and English, scored well in the ACT and SAT, and back in those days, they had a test of st standard written English, and he just did great on that too. He spoke clearly and articulately, and he had good reasons for wanting to study business in college. The boy who said he couldn't write was a sports reporter for his high school newspaper and an exceptional varsity hockey player. But like so many students feeling pressure to get in, David's fear of writing the essay prevented him from getting the job done. So I said to him, can you think? He said, uh, yes. I said, well, then you can write. That's the message that I give to my students, and that's the message that I want you to give to yours. If you can think, you can write. And that would be something I hope you all write down because it's a great positive message for all of your children. So David, um, I asked him why, he, why did he want to go to college and what did he want admissions to know about him? And he said, everyone thought of him as this gifted hockey player, the jock, the popular jock. But he had this other side to him that nobody really knew except for his closest friends. He was really kind and compassionate with a soft spot for children with special needs. He wanted colleges to see that side of him. So we brainstormed ideas based on what he wanted colleges to know. He was afraid to write about hockey, he said. Everyone told him not to write about sports. So I explained to him that a college essay was not about the experience, that it was about him, his insight into the experience, any experience. If David had a story about sports that demonstrated kindness and compassion, I told him it might work. In the end, he wrote about the moment his cousin with Down syndrome, who regularly attended his hockey games, held up a homemade sign to cheer him on during a game. He said, I just wanted to score one for my cousin. He did, by the way. His story about his relationship with his disabled cousin turned into an incredibly insightful essay that illustrated something meaningful to David that colleges would never have known about him. He used it for several different applications. It was genuine, his idea, and nobody else could duplicate it. He got into all the schools he applied to. That night, David's mom called. She'd never seen her son this excited about anything other than girls or sports. He finally believed he could write. He listened to his writing voice and he liked what he heard. Your children can do the same. 
So I share that story because it answers so many questions I've been getting from parents this year, last year, 10 years ago. And I thought it might be helpful, so I hope you enjoyed it. The other way you can help is to make sure your children get the right kind of guidance and stay calm. Do yoga, <laughs> go for a run, go for a swim, but really try really hard to stay calm. And I know it's hard, so call me and I'll give you some tips. Okay, next. So now we're gonna do our top five list. And this rarely changes. I could do the same top five list every year. So let's go. So we get this question like 10 times a week. What are the best and worst college essay topics? And I'm guessing we get this question because you can search this on the internet and you'll see 10 best topics, 10 worst topics. And my answer is the same for both. The best topic is the one that illustrates a trait that your, your child, not your student, that your child wants to share with colleges and is insightful. And the worst one doesn't do it. And I know I'm making it simple, but there are no best topics and there are no worst topics. Your child can write about something that's controversial because ultimately the story is not about the controversy. I've had students, parents tell me, don't let my child write about not believing in God. And this is a child who goes to either a Catholic boys school or a Jewish day school. And it's the same fear. Don't let my child write about God. And one time I had a student whose parent had instructed me to do exactly that. Don't let my child write about this. And I thought, well, I wonder why she's saying this. Turns out that he started questioning God in a class in school. He raised his hand. A rat, it was a Jewish boy. A rabbi was, was teaching the class and he said, I'm sorry, rabbi, I'm not sure I believe in God. And guess what happened? Everybody in the class went like this. They raised their hands and they started talking about whether they did or whether they didn't. And the story wasn't even about religion or belief in God. It was about a little shy boy who finally spoke up and felt like a leader for the first time in his life. It was a beautiful, beautiful story. So some people might say that was a worst topic, other people best topic, but it was really good because it was genuine, it was about him, and it answered the prompt and shared something meaningful about the student. Let's go to top four now. <laughs> What's next? So what do admissions counselors look for? So while Ginger is standing there looking like she wants to speak, I'm going to throw this one at Ginger because she worked at Duke and she worked right alongside with a legend in the admissions office, Christoph Gutentag. And she knows so much about this. I wanted you to start. Sure. I mean, I would just echo really what you've already said, Kim, which is that you're not looking for anything other than for you to share the story you have to tell as a student. Um, if there were right and wrong answers, if there was like a perfect sort of checklist of things that they were looking for, then everyone on the campus would be the same and it wouldn't be the place you wanna go to. Um, part of what draws you to the school is the diversity of students and perspective and ideas and that's all in the essays too. Um, so there's not like a right or a wrong or a cookie cutter sort of if it fits, then we ad if it fits, you must admit, you know, kind of version of admissions. I've read great essays that have been about very ordinary things. I've read really poorly written essays about extraordinary moments. Um, it's not the what, as you said, it's not the topic that's really important. It's, it's the characteristics and the quality of the student that it conveys. Um, in, I mean, in general, they're certainly looking for good writing. Um, they'd like to see that a student can um, communicate their ideas effectively, um, since that's part of what they'll be doing while they're in college. Um, but really, they're just looking for a student who's willing to speak to them directly. I guess the other thing I would say is that, you know, given part of the reason that I mentioned how many essays I've read is to let you know that you are probably unlikely to be able to write something that I've never ever seen or heard before. <laughs> um, and so that's not your goal. 
Um, your goal isn't to write something that no and it makes an admissions officer say, wow, I've never ever seen an essay like this before. It's wow, this kid has done a really good job helping me know who they are. Um, so you don't need to have a particularly um, extraordinary experience have happened to you to be able to write in extraordinary ways. Some of my favorite essays of all time are about pretty ordinary things. One of my very favorites was about selling Girl Scout cookies. Um, there was a really good one about playing hacky sack, um, one about trying broccoli for the first time. Um, it's really just about the way the student approaches it, not what, what the topic is, because they're just trying to get to know you. And the essay is important because it's the one time that you actually get to speak directly to the admissions committee. The rest of your application is a lot of other people talking for you. I couldn't have said it better. But Ginger, I wanted to um, expand on something you said when you talked about the ordinary, the mundane moments that you liked. And I mean, I had some, one of my favorites is about a girl who learned how to mow the lawn. And what I loved about it was that she expected it to be easy. She didn't know she was, things came easily to her and she had to work so hard to get it right. And then another one where a, a guy decided to switch from gymnastics to diving and he couldn't do a simple dive and he stayed after practice one day for hours and hours with his team cheering him on and finally he did it he did a really bad job at it and he felt so successful and showed hard work so the broccoli one do you remember it well enough to remember what the trait was was it like kind of trying new things it was being open-minded it was being open willing to try something new um and it was you know a student sort of acknowledging that pivot moment of when they opened up to new experiences um and that and the broccoli was like an example of that i love it i love it and then the other thing is so how can your child stand out and i just this quote just sticks in my mind so sean felton who's the director of undergraduate admissions at cornell i can hear him i mean he's in my head saying would you just answer the prompt and if you do that you'll stand out <laughs> and the way to answer the prompt is to focus on the trait that makes the child who that child is. They, they're not looking for anything. They want to read a story that kind of gives them a mental picture of what this child looks like. They want a visual um, through words. They want to know more. They don't have to like your child, but they have to know liking is good they have to like your child is a candidate for the school and they have to want to know more and they do read them you know we get asked that all the time do they really read them do you think that they would actually ask you to do all this work if they weren't going to look at it or think about it i don't so anyway let's go on to number three what do we have here oh how will colleges know if you fix the essay? I, I remember this. Um, it was one of Erica, what's her, I can't remember her last name, but from the University of Michigan. She was the top person at the University of Michigan. And she said, because I read. <laughs> they read so much. Ginger read so many. You can tell. I can tell. I've had students go through the process, and then I read something that doesn't match what they did earlier. Colleges read the whole package. They see your grades, they see stuff. They can see things that don't quite match. And when parents help or an adult or a sibling or anybody, it could be a high school teacher. When anybody helps, they rarely rewrite the whole thing. They throw on a topic sentence or wrap it up with a bow conclusion. And then there's various voices in the essay that don't match. So anybody who reads can tell. And so the the only takeaway from this is just please don't do it. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go. Do you have anything to add to that? I would say one trick for knowing that you are getting, as a student, that you're getting ready to submit an essay that sounds like you is to read it out loud. You don't have to have any kind of audience, your dog, the wall, <laughs> whatever. Um, but if you read it out loud, you'll catch any of those places where someone who really was very well intentioned tried to help a little too much and gave you an example that doesn't really resonate with you or a word that came out of the thesaurus instead of your own head. Um, and your mind will be kind of 
anticipating what you would be reading, but then it's not what's there and you'll flub it. Um, it's a psychology of language. It's a class that I took in college ages ago, but it, it still works. Um, so if you read it out loud, that's a really good test to make sure that you have actually written in your own genuine voice. That's a good tip. But if you do it, if they do it themselves and they don't use a thesaurus and they don't take that advice, it'll never be a problem. But it is, it is a good idea to read it out loud anyway, because then you hear things and you catch things and you'll even catch little grammatical errors in the end. So that, that's a great tip, thanks. All right, so number two, what are the do's and don'ts for parents when it comes to the college essay? Definitely help your child, these are the do's, let's start with the do's. So definitely help your child parse the prompt, discuss what they mean and what colleges want. And we actually did that for you in the book. Um, so, you know, this, it's easy, you can help your children with that. You can brainstorm ideas with your child and you can provide a brief overview of the essay's significance within the admissions process. I'd also like to add, like, use the word opportunity whenever possible because the college essay is an opportunity to share something that you want the admissions people to know. And beyond everything else that you've done, this is the one place where you can actually control what you do. You know, by the time you apply to college, most of your grades are in, you've taken whatever tests you're gonna do, it's senior year, and this is something now that you can do to help yourself stand out. Make sure that you share the positive traits that you see in your child and um, start a conversation doing that. We've, ar we've already talked about it. And we have um, a finding your voice free write activity that I'd also be happy to give to you. And I, I can send that to Ginger if, or again, if you email me and you want it, but we have a morning writing activity that helps. It wasn't intended as a voice exercise. It's a warm up, and we do a lot of free writing. And if you were to do this exercise with your child, they may see what their voice sounds like. So I'm happy to share that with you and just email me if you want it at kimatwellwritingworkshop.com and I'll be happy to send it to you. Also, stay positive and offer encouragement, which is, you know, I, I, you know, I already told you that, but I'm gonna tell you that a lot of times tonight because it's so important. Trust, 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 positive, positive, positive. The don'ts, okay, you'll see they're kind of opposite of what I just said, but don't tell your child what prompt to select. Colleges don't like one better than another. Choice means just pick one. Whichever one speaks to you, there's not one right or wrong. I hear people all the time making editorial judgments about which one is best, which one's college is like, and the truth is, and Ginger will back me up on this, there is not one they like better than the other. They like the one that speaks to you. True? <laughs> Ginger? Got it. Um, don't, don't tell your child um, what traits they want to see. Don't tell them what to write, which topic you think is better. Don't say that the essay doesn't matter or that admissions representatives don't read them. In fact, now there is some talk in the industry like that the essay could rise in significance in an era, um, in an era that is test optional, a lot of test optional schools. I'm going to say that we don't know enough yet, but what we're finding is that the essay has always been important. And I think that the message to you is to just tell your children it's important. We may see some more short answer essays come. We don't know yet. We know the common app prompts are out, but it doesn't matter. Anytime your child is asked to write something, it's important. It can help. It's not going to rescue a lousy transcript. It could help a student make that case. It's important. So I believe it's always been important. And you may be hearing some people making a case for it being more important. But it doesn't matter because your child has to write it. So just let them know that. That's my message. And if Ginger wants to add to that, I'd love to hear it. We haven't even talked about that yet. But the other don't is, um, don't be discouraging or negative. That just makes your child feel bad. And I know sometimes we want to help, but 
yeah, it doesn't feel good if you look at the essay and start marking it up. Um, it just makes them feel bad. And don't write the essay for your child. Don't write an intro and a middle and an end thinking nobody will know. Just stay away. <laughs> okay. Do you have anything to add, Ginger? Okay. And then number one. So how important is the college essay within the test optional environment? I think I just answered that. So I think we're good with that. And does your child need to answer the Common Apps optional COVID-19 prompt? So what I'm going to say is last year this time when I was doing a webinar for Apple Ruth, we thought it was pretty important because it was all new and colleges said, we really want to hear it. We care about you. This is so important to us. So there are different variety, different versions of COVID-19 prompts. I believe some of them are going to stay. And the answer to that question is, if it speaks to your child, if something really significant happened that they want to share, by all means, share it. Only if this is not evident elsewhere in the application. But remember that colleges do not want your child to feel pressure to manufacture any kind of experience or to demonstrate how resourceful they were during the pandemic. They're really not interested in that. Um, Ginger and I were talking about this a little bit before we came on tonight and conventional wisdom says this may not be as important this year as it was last year. So talk to your high school counselor, see what they think. You can ask the admissions people. I'm happy to talk to you about it. Ginger's probably, I can't speak for her, but really so you might not have to do that. But I think this might be a good time for me to tell you that there is a new prompt and a new prompt doesn't mean a lot to you because you haven't seen any of them yet. But I, in our, yeah. It would actually be helpful to back up for a second and just talk about the application form so people know where they find these questions that we call prompts. Oh, sure. So there are, so there are, uh, there are almost 4,000 colleges and universities in the United States and an infinite, seemingly infinite number abroad. Um, so there are lots and lots of different schools and they may, they can all ask whatever questions they want to, but a number of schools have agreed to use a common application form to make life a little bit easier for applicants and their supporters. Um, so the, you know, counselors at school who are submitting multiple transcripts and letters of recommendation and that sort of thing. So there's one that's called the common application um, and that's accepted by over 900 colleges and universities. And then there's another one called the coalition um, for college or the co or the coalition application. And that also has many, many members. Um, and so if you are applying to one of those schools, you just use one common form and it has a, a series of choices for your long essay question, which is also called a personal statement. And one of the choices is to write on a topic of your choice. So you don't even have to necessarily, you know, choose one of these questions in particular, but there are some standard prompts as we call them, which is basically to say question that you're answering as, as part of the essay. And that's, as, that's the main college essay that we've been talking about tonight. There are, as Kim mentioned, there are some schools that ask what we call supplementary questions or short answer questions that might be specific to the college or the thing that you want to study. Um, we're really talking in broad strokes about the big college essay. So now you can <laughs> jump in. No, that was great. That was great. Thank you for adding that. So there are seven prompts. The seventh is optional. Um, we like to save the optional prompt. You know, for we, you still have to talk about something that happened, like what and why. So, but we don't have to get in that. But there are seven prompts and there's a new one. And in the book that I'm gonna give to all of you, it's not parsed in there because it's new. So I thought I might do that for you tonight. So the prompt is this. So hear me out. <laughs> Reflect on something that someone has done for you that's made you happy or thankful in a surprising way. How has this gratitude how has this gratitude affected or motivated you? So I know it's a mouthful. And it sounds great. I can write about being grateful. You can. You can write about being grateful in a lot of prompts, but this one is very specific, it's complex, and it seems to be asking about how you felt, the time you felt gratitude. So it's not so simple, it's really reflective and very specific, and there's a lot of keywords here. 
most of the prompts have like two keywords that you have to think about. So this is, I'm going to tell you what they are. Reflect, surprising, gratitude, affected, and motivated. So you're being invited to reflect on someone else's action, but the story you tell should not be primarily about the other person's act. Nothing you write about should be about somebody else, always about yourself. It should be about how your experience affected you, what changed for you, what did you do differently as a result. The prompt doesn't ask you, however, just to share any act of kindness. Um, readers want to know about something someone did for you that made you happy or thankful in a surprising way. Maybe the other person surprised you. Maybe you were surprised that you felt so grateful or happy. Maybe it came through in some other way. So if you can identify a story, it's very specific, that focuses on you, showcases a characteristic or trait that demonstrates who you are and fits these criteria, but also explains how your gratitude affected or motivated you to do something, this could be for you. And it's just very specific. People say, do you like it? And I say, it doesn't matter if I like it. The best prompt for me is the one that speaks to you. So, you know, it's another option. And because it's new doesn't mean it's better. The prompt that speaks to you or your child, not you, your child is the one that your child should pick. So, okay, let's move on to our gift. So if you go to wildwritingworkshop.com forward slash Apple Ruth, you can get, you'll see there's a copy of our book for you. And we have some other things on there that you might enjoy. Okay, we um, have some resources on that page, private coaching options, free book, free monthly class, and again, it's on the same site. I'm going to say that we are not for everyone. There's probably a couple of you here tonight who are looking for coaches. The rest of you are totally welcome to come to our free class, get the free book, take advantage of anything we have to offer. But if you think that you might want to work with a coach, please, please reach out and let me know. Next. And what questions do you have? And email me if you want. Kim at wildwritingworkshop.com. Do you have anything to add before we take the questions, Ginger? I think we're ready to dive into some of these questions because there are a lot and we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. So let's jump into it. So um, can students only choose one prompt to respond to on the common application? Uh, yes. <laughs> Correct. Um, there's also a question about do students indicate which prompt they're responding to or do they write an essay and hope that the admissions officer can interpret what prompt they were intending to write about? No, no, no. You pick your prompt and then and it says you you tell them which prompt you're answering. Absolutely. And I, I will say as an admissions officer, it should be obvious to me when I'm reading the essay which prompt you have. <laughs> you have written to towards, um, but it should be <laughs> left to me to guess it. Um, so it is helpful um, to be intentional about it. And as um, our friend Sean says, right, if you're if you're picking a prompt, write to it. Um, yeah, I, and I wanted to add something to that. You should, we do recommend that students pick one of the prompts rather than the optional prompt. You can pick the optional prompt as long as you do the job. But the reason is because sometimes counselors and consultants and the people you work with, they say, oh, we just love for you to write something and then we'll pick a prompt later. It's far easier to answer a question than to guess. It's pretty simple. So if you just pick one and answer it, and if you want to move it later, that's okay. But it's just easier to answer an actual question than to just say, oh, it's optional to write about anything. That's hard for me and I'm a professional writer. so. Just a little extra. Okay. Let's and move on. one related question to that: Can can a student use one essay for mo several applications? If it answers the prompt, you certainly. And a lot of times, you don't have to start from the beginning. But I wouldn't recommend just taking something from one school and sticking it in another. Now, the Common App essay is used for multiple schools. And if you're applying to a school on the, that uses a different application and they want a 500 word version of that same essay, you can cut it, but it, you've got a starting point and you can always reuse stuff, but don't just cut and paste it into a slot. 
And if you're answering a supplement, there's like a very popular supplement. It's, we call it Why College X or Why Us. And it's, it's a very important, very important essay that tells, it's like the match.com, why should I date you, why should you be here essay. And I, it's not my favorite expression, but it's actually the easiest way to explain what it is. They want to see if you're a match. And like there are several schools that have similar prompts, but if you're applying to Northwestern University, and actually that's a bad, I don't think they even have that prompt anymore, but if they, they had a very similar question to the University of Michigan, but they have different programs at their school. So if you write about a program at University of Michigan and you use it to apply to another school, they're gonna know, and they, they know what the questions are for other schools. So they, the message to colleges will be that you didn't care enough to take the time to make sure this was written for us. So just be careful. You don't have to start from scratch, but you do have to be careful. We do have a couple of questions about starting. So we've got a junior who's watching right now and wants to know, is the summer the right time to start an official college essay? Sure, it's a great time to start. As soon as school is done, as soon as you're done with those AP classes, and sometimes parents try to get students to start sooner, or they have a week. Here, you've got a whole week, do it now. I don't know any student who wanted to finish a year of school and then spend the whole next week writing a college essay. There's plenty <laughs> of time in the summer. And if you're going to camp in the summer, wait till you get home. Unless you, you're going to need a couple weeks to work on it. So, yeah, I've never had a student start at the end of May, go away for a summer and remember anything they did in August. So it's, it's good to have a couple weeks where you can, the key is start and finish. Don't dawdle, just get it done. <laughs> can you talk about how long a college essay would typically be? Yeah, first of all, the common app is, they say no shorter than 250 words and no longer than 650. And if it goes over, it'll get cut off. And if it's less than 250, it actually I think I don't think they accept it. They say it can't be shorter than 250 and it can't be longer than 650. The message here is to read the instructions for any school, for any prompt. They will tell you what they want. And it's a big mistake to not listen to them. So it doesn't have to be 650 words for the Common App. If you're applying to like the University of Maryland, I think they might be taking the Common App this year. I don't, I think they might be on it. But they used to take the coalition app and so you have to write 500 words they won't they say about 500 but we called them and asked and they didn't want it to be a little longer just because you wrote an essay for the common app so you have to just all you have to do it doesn't even matter if they're what application they're on if you're applying to the university of maryland read the instructions they all have them and if it's not clear contact them email them people are pretty open okay there's a an interesting question to me which is how many people on the admissions um in the admissions office will read an application and what happens if one admissions officer likes it and another admissions officer does not god i wish i were a fly on the wall at every single of those four thousand schools it depends on the school and nobody's going to answer that for you. And Ginger might have some insight into Duke, and I have some insight into, like, I know what they do at the University of Michigan, but I don't know how many people. I know that it goes through, like, three different iterations. <laughs> There's probably six people who read your essays. But I don't know if it matters. Does I, I don't, I I don't really, I you, I might, you, you might know more about this than I do. So at most, it really depends. It will be read by at least one person, um, but it is often read by two or three. Um, and um, and the point I think of reading applications is not to like or dislike an essay, um, but to feel compelled by the student's story and to feel like that student will make a powerful and important contribution to the campus community. Um, so that the essay is just one piece of that puzzle. Um, if an admissions officer has a question about an essay, um, some just something maybe it is a controversial topic, and they're 
curious about sort of how that person might might fit into the Canvas community, then they will ask colleagues to read it and, and sort of have a broader conversation. Sometimes the entire admissions committee is convening, so that can be as many as 25 people, sometimes it's six. Um, so, um, so there's always different people who are reading your application. And of course, if you submit the common application to more than one school, then it's multiplied by however many schools that you apply to. Sure. All of which is to say, you don't know who the reader is necessarily going to be on the other side. So you can't control that part. The thing you pay attention to is the input, right? That you put in an application that makes you feel really proud of the job that it's done conveying who you are and what you value. And if you've done that, then you can feel like your admissions process has been successful um, because you told them your story. If they get it wrong in their interpretation or they don't see what a great contribution you would make to their campus, that is their problem and not your fault. <laughs> um, so yeah. that's so that's the that's really what happens um, in the real life story. Is that if you want to talk about it as colleagues, you absolutely do. Um, is it true though? Can I? I'm sorry. Yeah, you can ask. I've heard that if it's really controversial, if it's negative, one mistake students can make is writing about something that comes off as negative, which is not to say you can't write about something that was sad or something that happened, but they want to see positive traits out of any story. And I, it's it's happened before where they, if they're concerned, they'll call your high school counselor and ask about you. So, I mean, that's. It's true. Yeah. There are real people on the other side of the process. <laughs> I know. And what yeah. is the story? And they're the office of admissions, not the office of denial. <laughs> what we, that's what we say. That's what um, say. There's a question about is writing in the first person acceptable? Um, so I think this is a great time, Kim, for you to talk about a little bit about how college essay writing differs from the kind of writing that students have been trained by their teachers into doing, right? We, we the five paragraph essay. <laughs> we kick the first person out of the, you know, we kick opinion out of, out of a piece of academic writing and you've got to have quotes and textual evidence and everything else. And then here comes the college essay that feels like the culmination of high school and it's yeah. not that same kind of writing. So could you talk a little bit about that? It's totally, totally different. You don't start with, you don't have to think about having five pair in school you are learning a prescriptive type of writing and it's true and it's okay. It's what you're learning. So a lot of times when you get this assignment, a lot of students have either had very little experience writing this way or none at all. And I'm gonna say most students have not done this at all. So it's a little, um, it's confusing. It can, it can trigger angst, but and this is the first time in your life that you've really been asked to write something about yourself that matters. I, I'm going to make a case for I being the most important word in your college essay. This isn't about a book you read and you don't have to back up any thesis with evidence and three, what is it? You got your thesis sentence and three, three, three ideas and then you have a topic sentence and you have a conclusion and an introduction, all the stuff that you have to do. Your English teacher will say, I want you to have a quote and I want you to use three transitions and they tell you what kinds of stuff you're supposed to put in there. So you're already writing with a structure in mind. And the way you write this is to have an open mind to follow a process of discovery, go through revisions and thinking process and write something that you're going to feel really good about that answers this prompt and shows something meaningful. And the key is something that's important to you. So you're not writing about the book for English. It's not about the raisin in the sun, whatever books you read in AP English. It's not about any of that. It's about you. And so you can't go to the library and research this. It's all here. And so you can have a conversation with a friend to find out what they think about you. You can, you know, we have a process where we ask you questions, you answer, and then we have a meeting with our students and help you identify the story that speaks to you. We let the students pick it. But the, some people think there are um, actual structures 
that are better than others and the best structure for you is the one that emerges through a process of writing and it's not going to look like anything you've ever written before and i i find that our students actually love what they write and they feel really good about it because oftentimes it is the first thing they've written that matters and what matters sometimes comes through a very small moment that highlights something incredibly meaningful and colleges love that they eat it up <laughs> so it's really different it is not a five paragraph essay and those are really boring by the way <laughs> they serve them. right <laughs> huh? um, so a couple of specific questions from students who are tuning in tonight. Is it true that you should not indent paragraphs and that you must use two spaces after every period? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not Correct. true. I will tell you it's easier if you don't indent um, because in the forms that you're using, the online forms, it doesn't use tabs and so you can't kind of get it lined up right and that frustrates people yeah. so it's easier to not indent and to put a full space in between paragraphs i will tell you that is easier to read it I will is easier to read tell you, i was taught <laughs> in typing class um I that you can go here <laughs> cases after a period but that is considered old school now um you can do it however you like but i'll tell you that it's easier to read if you put two spaces after your, after your periods but it's a very contentious and, debate in our office so i'm only speaking for is my it family. really because i don't think anybody cares <laughs> an admissions officer, I mean, admissions officer is not going to make any decision, different decision based on based on your spacing. It's just a matter of being nice to your reader. They're reading thousands of essays. It's nice if you make yours easy to read. There's, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to make a case for do whatever you feel like, because I think there are bigger things to worry about than whether you're using an Oxford comma or you have a space there. But it is like. I, I use two spaces because I'm older <laughs> and I read all the same stuff and I'm like, oh my God. And I've gotten, the older I get, the less I care about rules, they have a healthy respect for the rules of written English. Make sure you just do the best you can. Certainly don't use spell check, but certainly read it and make sure everything's spelled correctly and don't start your sentences with lowercase i's. There are things that just make you look bad, but yeah. <laughs> what about um, the vocabulary that you used? Is it important oh. to use fancy vocabulary? Is it important to write in a formal tone of voice? Yeah. No, it's important to use the voice that you were given at birth in your 17 year old style. Use the words you already know. This is no time to be experimenting with words that you are not comfortable with. I have seen, we call them thesaurus words, and we actually advise our students to not even look up a word. You're supposed to sound like yourself, a smart 17 year old student applying to college. It's a mistake when you use words that aren't in your normal vocabulary, you lose your authentic voice. It starts to sound, not only does it not sound like you, it usually sounds funky and a little off and you want to sound like yourself i can always tell when a student is trying to impress so when you use when you do that like if you're if you use big words every day in your life if you have this exceptional vocabulary by all means that's what should come out but you shouldn't be looking it up and you shouldn't be playing around colleges want to know who you are right now and they'll be impressed with your voice, your words, your story. Thank you for asking that. That's a big, that's a big sticking point for me. And I think I'm going to put it in my next webinar on a slide. <laughs> One student would like to know if it, if it would be a good idea to write it like a persuasive essay. Meaning? Meaning you're trying to convince your reader that you're right. Well, you are trying to convince your reader you're right. This is, um, that is what you're doing. But I think you're asking if it sh if you need to support it. Like, it sounds like you're asking if it should be a five paragraph essay that you're writing for English class, which would mean 
you're making a case for something, then you support it with your evidence, and then you wrap it up. You say it, you repeat it, you repeat it again, and then you wrap it up. And you don't need to do that. You're thinking too much. Just answer the prompt, share something meaningful, showcase the traits and characteristics that are important to you, the ones that you want colleges to know about you, something they wouldn't know from the rest of your application. So the one thing that I haven't said yet, that I'm even surprised I haven't said, is that this is, no matter what the prompt, I want you to remember this. Ask yourself this one question. Parents, tell this to your kids, students who are here, just listen, hear me out. What is it that you want college to know about you apart from your grades, test scores if they're applicable, and the rest of your application, which would be everything else? What do you want them to know? Think about traits and characteristics, not things you did, not experiences, not awards, not activities. And then you'll, then you're going to nail it. <laughs> try and get it. I'm trying to try and squeeze in just a couple more questions that had come okay. in earlier. Um, could you talk a little bit about the COVID impact question? Um, should students talk about opportunities they've missed or talk about what they did instead? How should someone use that space? Oh, hmm. If you're going to use it, it should be whatever, I mean, we kind of talked about this. Only use the space if you have something additional to share that you want to share with colleges. So if something happened because of COVID-19 that affected your huge activity, what, let's say you play football and you weren't able to do that and you just didn't know what to do, and you found something else to do that wasn't so meaningful, but you wanted them to know, you can. They're asking you, they're giving you a space for it. I don't think it will hurt you, but don't whine and don't gloat. And if you're not sure, ask your high school counselor, ask Ginger, ask Kim, ask, you know, but, you can do it if it speaks to you. You just don't want to write an essay that says, I didn't get to take the SAT five times, so my score was almost perfect, but I really wanted a 1600. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> that sounds like gloating. That sounds like whining. That sounds like privilege. So you just, they do want to know what you went through, but we, we're all in a way the COVID-19 is something that has affected every single person in the world. And it's been like this for over a year. So how important this is going forward, I'm not sure. But if it speaks to you and you feel the need to answer it, by all means, go ahead and don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't. But definitely be, you know, you don't have to be completely positive, but don't whine and don't gloat. And Ginger, you had some stuff to add to that. What do, what do you I think? think that, I think that's well said. I have heard from some admissions officers this year that they felt like students felt like they had to write something and that they would say, you don't have to use the space. If it doesn't, if there's nothing that you wanted to say and share that you couldn't share elsewhere in the, in the application, this is the place for it. But if you've said everything you need to say, you don't have to fill the spot just because it's there. Um, it's just there in case there's something that you need to hear. Um, that's, I guess that that would be the message. So echoing echoing what you've said, I think. Okay. Um, any examples of great essays? Yeah, we don't do that. I'll tell you why. <laughs> I think it would be because helpful to see why. I agree. <laughs> we're not into sample essays. And the reason is that we, our books are called effective, how to write an effective college application essay because great and good aren't so relevant. What colleges want is an answer to a prompt. If we were to share examples of what I, if I share with you something I think is great, then you're gonna go home and try to copy it. In fact, there is an essay that's circulating from a girl who got into Harvard and wrote about like her mom died. You know the essay? 
it's been all over the place she did a video she's on instagram she's everywhere and her message is the essay that got me into harvard I want you guys to know how many essays you have to write to apply to Harvard. It's a lot. It's like four or five essays. This was one, one essay. Her application was probably phenomenal. She was qualified. That one essay, your one essay, the essay that I might share with you is not the thing that's going to get you into college. And so I can't share it. I can tell you I love the essay about the girl who wrote about mowing the lawn. If you want to copy that go ahead <laughs> it's, but people emulate what other people do um, there was a year when a girl wrote about Costco shopping in Costco from the time she was two and and upward and I think she got into a bunch of schools and ended up at Stanford she had to write a lot more than one essay that essay was a little over the top it didn't sound that genuine to me some of the admissions people I talked to liked it some thought it was awful and that so what does it matter like what i think is great what matters is that every student has an opportunity to write something meaningful and the best essay that i'm gonna like is the one that you write that you like that answers the prompt and shares something meaningful about you so sorry i don't share samples <laughs> Kim, is there one last piece of advice you want to share with the students and parents who are watching tonight? Yeah, take this seriously, but it's not as easy as I make it sound for a lot of people, but it's not as hard as most of you think it is. Trust yourself and parents help your children understand it's okay to trust themselves. Feel confident take this as that opportunity it's meant to be and be genuine share something meaningful to you because they want to know who you are they want to know if you're going to fit in in the campus it's nothing that you can you can't make it up it's inside of you so just trust yourself so my one message is that trust yourself i think that's a great piece of advice um, thank you all so much for being with us tonight. Um, I hope that we've answered some questions and given you some good food for thought and some good ideas of how to take the next step um, as you get ready on your journey. We're thrilled that you joined us for this um, part of College Week here at Apple Ruth, and we have two more sessions um, coming up on Wednesday and Thursday evenings that you're welcome to attend as well. As a reminder, we will send everyone all of the recordings and um, presentations from this week on Friday. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, if there are things that we can be helpful with um, here at Apple Ruth, we've got some great summer boot camps for kids who are ready to get started on SAT or ACT prep or want to do some academic review um, and up those skills that might have gotten a little bit lost in virtual learning before um, you're back in the fall. So if we can help, we're really glad to. Um, you've got a lot of great resources that Kim has been generous enough to share with you as well. So I hope you'll follow up with her at WOW Writing Workshop, which is very Googleable. Um, if you'd like to um, take advantage of any of those offers that she's given you. Thank you all so much for being part of this conversation. We wish you all the best in your journey and the adventures you have before you. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much and good night. Thank you.